Okay, we're still editing in CapCut. Do you want to go a little faster? Is it a little bit hard getting around and getting things done? That's what this video is about. Let's pick up the pace. Let's go. Okay, so we're back in CapCut. We're getting things done. We're getting through it, but sometimes it's a little bit of a slog, isn't it? It can be tough to get around and figure out how to find things. So we're going to speed that up today. What we're going to be doing is looking at this middle bar that goes right across here and look at all of these tools and what they do. We're going to do this pretty quick, but I think you can handle it now. You know your stuff. Okay, so here we are in CapCut. And what I've done is I've put in a bunch of clips. I've got a big clip in the middle, little video clip at the end, some uh, miscellaneous clips at the beginning just so we have something on the timeline to work with and uh, um, demonstrate what we're going to be doing. So the first thing I want to show you is this, we're going to go left to right. From, uh, from here, when we hit select, now the select button it allows us to select a clip, and there it is, it's highlighted. Now, we can also split the clip if we're here and we hit this and we hit split, it splits the, splits it in two. Got to go back to uh, select and now we can see it's been split. I actually split it twice, so that's there too. Okay, so now we want to, uh, I'm going to go and use the undo button and undo those. But now we're going to do something different. Select leftward. What does that mean? Select leftward, hit the clip, and now that is one big clip. And all of those little still pictures that were uh, separate from this clip, they're now attached to it. And I can, I've put the end at the beginning. Of course, we can do the same thing with this, put that at the beginning. or at the end, excuse me. So, same thing's going to happen with select rightward, so obviously. Select rightward, we pick this, and now that's all connected to each other. See how that works? That could make your, uh, your work a lot faster. Sometimes you'll make a, an edit and it'll leave a blank opening and you need to move the clip over to attach to the, the clip before it. And you're doing each individual clip. Well, if you hit that, everything from, the, from that spot over is going to move together. And it'll save you a ton of time of moving each clip individually. You get it? Hope so. Okay, we all know the undo button. The hat's a godsend. So... We won't talk about that anymore. Now, we haven't talked, I don't think, in the past about this button, and it's the reset. So if you've undone something, let's say we've done a clip here, and we do split. We want to split the clip. Now we can undo that, or we can go back and put it back on. Now we're just going back and forth between those two choices. With me? Okay, great. Next, this button here is simply how you split a clip. You know how to do that. We've seen that before. So that's going to take this big long clip and wherever my cursor is, hit that, and now it's two separate clips. Okay? Whoops. Let that one get in there again. I'm going to get to how to avoid that, uh, one of these other buttons, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so that's how you do the split. Now we're going to go back and take the split out. And there we are. Now, the next one. Delete left. Let's say I started this video, and on this long clip, we started it out, 
Welcome back to the older creator. We see that there's that big delay. Now, I could hit split, and then I could go down here and hit delete on the little remainder that I wanted to get rid of. But instead of doing that, I can delete left. And that just got rid of that little clip. Okay, so saves you a step. You're going to be able to do the same thing. Delete right. So if I'm up here and I want all this to go away, I can just hit delete right. It's gone. Okay, so that's how you do that. And it only, it only got rid of up to the next uh, split point. So... But I just got rid of that split point. Now I'm going to hit delete right. That whole section disappeared. Okay, put it back in. Don't forget that undo button. It's your best buddy. It'll get you out of trouble a lot. Okay, so delete left, delete right. This is called a marker. Really useful. If you have, some, if you need, if you need to keep an eye on a particular spot, say there's, you know that there's going to be something that you're going to want to do here, whether it's add a, a sticker or something else, but you're doing something else in the timeline and you don't want to get into that, you're going to do that later. It's going to be a second stage. Well, you could put a marker right there, and there it is. You see it? it stays behind, and when I go over to it it's going to be a thing that that finds. So just like the cursor is finding split points and attaching to them, it's going to do the same thing to a marker. So markers can be a lot of help. Okay, so the next one is not something we're going to be talking about today. It's a whole video to itself. The next button that we come across is voiceover. We're not going to do this either because we're going to do a video on that. But voiceover is going to allow you to attach a microphone to your computer and talk over the top of your video. It can be a lot of help, so keep an eye on that one. Okay, so the next one is called Turn Off Main Track Magnet. Right now it's on. So if I take this clip and I move it, and I let it go, it's going to snap back. Now what it did was take that end clip and put it... It also moved. So when I take off magnet tracking, uh, or the magnet, now I can move this by itself anywhere I want it to go, and it's not going to automatically snap back. When I put it here. This can be a big help because if I have, like when I'm doing these videos and I have me and I have the screen and I have to have those working together, they're on top of each other. But sometimes I need to realign them so that they match up together. And that's going to make it very helpful to turn that magnet off so that I can move this just a hair if I need to or just a little that way and big, big help. Most of the time you're going to have it on because snapping to a, a split point, it's so helpful. I mean, it's completely invisible. It's perfect. One frame goes to the exact next frame and it's right. But sometimes you need it off. So that's how you turn it off. Um, auto snapping is when I'm taking this and I get close to something and it snaps together. Okay, so now if I get close enough, it's going to snap into place. Boom, right there. If I go that way, it's going to snap into place. But along the timeline, because that one's off, I can leave it right in between. Make sense? Now let's snap it all together. There it goes. Everything just fell together. Okay? So, Hopefully you understand the difference between those two things. Okay, so the next one is called linkage. We can turn on and off linkage with this button. What's linkage? Let's show you. So let's say we took an effect and we added it to this clip right here. 
okay? And we did it that long. So when we, when we got there, flickery shots are going to come on. Here it comes. Okay, who cares? But the point being that with linkage on, which it's on right now, if I go to move this clip, that effect is going to move with it. Okay. Now, if I turn linkage off, it's going to leave it behind. Okay. So linkage on and off. If we've added effects, stickers, text, etc. We can have the linkage on and when we move the clip the whole thing will move. It'll move together. The, uh, the additions that we've made will move with it. And if we turn linkage off, whoops, that's snapping, linkage, then it'll leave those elements behind. You'll find some use for that down the road. The next one is turn on preview access. This axis, this can be very helpful. You'll see this yellow line appears, and if you look at the screen up above, if you watch this, we are scrubbing through the whole video and able to see everything that happens, okay? And so if we're looking for a particular point in the video, uh, it's a whole lot easier to use that than it is to try and use this. Much simpler. So that's your access. Next one. When you hit this button, look, well, I'm going to skip that for a second and go to the next one. This area over here, you have a plus button, a minus button, and a slider. And what you're doing is you're making our view of the timeline a lot more detailed. We're going frame to frame now. Now, if we go to the beginning, it's tiny. The whole video clip is just, the whole video is right there. It's not taking up much space. So this is going to allow us to zoom in on a particular area and look at it more closely. Uh, the minus buttons will move you down in size. The plus buttons will move you up in size, or you can use the slider to get around. Now, why, another reason this is really important is when you get in close, on your keyboard, you have up and down arrows. These are really important shortcuts, and I want you to pay attention to this because this is going to help you a ton. The up arrow key, well, before we do that, when you hit this ruler, what it's going to do is reduce the timeline to the size that it fits on the screen. The whole video will fit on the screen at its biggest size. So that's what that button is doing. Really, really helpful. Um, now, if I use the up arrow key on my keyboard, I'm going to go back to the next split point. It could be on the top timeline, the bottom one, it doesn't matter. Whatever the next spot is of a clip, it's going to go back to that. So if we hit it again, it goes to the beginning of that. And then it's going to go to the beginning of that clip and that, 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 that. Okay? Same thing is true of the bottom button. It's going to go up one split point at a time. Make sense? Now, when it's really, really critical that you get just the right spot, let's say... We were here, and one frame that way is the previous uh, clip. One frame this way is the next clip. If I need to do a precise edit that's only dealing with this clip, and it has to be started right at the beginning, this is how you get around frame by frame by frame. It's, you'll see, each frame. Each frame is represented, okay? So that's what that's doing. One last thing I want to show you. This little slider at the bottom, and it can be little or big, depending on how big you have your uh, 
um, timeline zoomed into. But this is going to allow you to move along the timeline anywhere you need to go. It's a quick way to get back to the beginning if you needed to. Um, other ways to do that, you can get close to the beginning and then hit the up key and boom, there you are, you're at the very beginning. Um, and that's it. That's what we're going to do today. You should, by using all of these tools, be able to get around and edit a heck of a lot faster than you've done before. Another little tip, do it in layers. So as you put in your A-roll, edit the A-roll so it's it's the length you want, it's the time you want, it's, it's, it's good, it's solid. Then add the B-roll on top of that and you'll cut down a lot of the cutting and uh, that you that you'll wind up doing if if you start skipping around to different steps a roll b roll uh, stickers or uh, photos or uh, other elements uh, effects transitions all of those things save those to the end that's the sweetener that's what that's how you finish it up and make it amazing but get the basics down and get them edited as clean as you can. You're going to wind up making some changes later on anyway, but it's going to minimize them and it's going to make your whole workflow a whole lot quicker. So how was that? Did it help? You know what to do. Give me a like. Subscribe. We're over 120. It's just, I'm really excited about what you guys are doing out there and I appreciate it so much. So until the next time we get together on... The older creator, I'll see ya.